Hello guys, welcome again to the session number two. Today we will be further discussing about the programming concepts and to learn further about the Python. So our today's agenda is to learn about the different functions, variables, syntax, and understanding the other core things related to the Python programming. And later we will be discussing about our reading task, hands-on practices, and how we will be ready to the next session. So I hope you're ready. So here we go. So what is the Python programming? We already discussed in our previous session that what is the fundamental programming. So this is the same thing. The programming is like a recipe where we can follow the different steps, set of rules, like what we had discussed in our previous part, previous lecture, that about the algorithm. So we analyze the situation, then we come up with the algorithm. So we follow these steps, we follow the sequence, and then we reach to the output. So in the programming the structure, the few of the structure are the conditional basis, few of these structures are the group basis, and few of these structures are going in a means different way. So we will be discussing about the all different aspects of the structures of programming today, and we can see that how different functions are the loops and other things are the variables they are working in Python. So the first and most important point is that whenever we store any information inside our computer while we are writing any program, so normally it is stored inside the memory. And the memory where we store the information that always contain the uh, address level where which can help us to refer back to that information, to restore that information, or to retrieve that information from that particular location. So you can see from the right side, that you can see that it is looks like the shelves, and each shelf is having a number like 1001, 1002, and so on. So you can see that 1011 contains the data. So whenever we wish to store the data, we can store the data at any particular address and then we can be able to retrieve the data back. So this is how, well, how we are storing the data by creating the variables. So what are the variable? As you can see from its name, so variable it means that it has a capability to store the data, but it vary with time. It means that the value can be changed, a value can be updated, okay? So now in this case, you can see that we declare the two variable one is the x and the other variable is the y. x variable containing the information, our value, which is 12.2 or 12.2, while the y variable has the information, which is the 14 or the value, which is the 14. Now you can see that in case you suppose for the x variable, previously it was having 12.2. And now if suppose we assign a new value, which is the 100, so that value will be all right and that information will be updated with the previous information. So now from this aspect, you can understand that the variable is like a container. It can hold the information and whenever we update the information, so it can be updated at that particular location. And whenever we want to access it back, so we can access that particular information with reference to its memory address. I hope you understand uh, about the variable. Now, <clears throat> before we use any variable in our programming languages, we are supposed to declare that variable. Like you can notice in the previous slide that where we discussed that we have the two variables, one is X and one is Y. So we need to create the variable and then we need to identify the type of the variable. So here there are the few reserved words. These are the keywords which we are not able to declare as a variable. So whenever we are going to declare a variable, we need to keep this thing important in our mind that we cannot declare a variable with a reserve keywords. Say for example, those reserve keywords are class, in, print, as, not, lambda, return, and so many other keywords. So we need to be careful that we can come up with the other variables, but we cannot go with the reserve keywords because they are already under the reserve and system our, our programming language will not allow to go with this one. Now, how we use these variables? 
what are the different modes so we have the different sort of the functionalities like we can have different functions like we have some sort of the different loops when we need the something in iterative mode or in a repetitive steps we want to do something again and again so for that rather to go to write the code again and again the good idea is that we can follow the loop and again we have multiple types of the loop so here you can see this is the one type of the loop so in this loop you can see that it will start when n is equal to 5 and if suppose condition is not going to fulfill then it will go and it will print the blast off otherwise if it, the condition is true then it will go to the print and it will assign a one value which is the n n is equal to n minus 1 so we can do the increment and decrement with this so this loop will continue until the condition is met once the condition is met after that it will automatically break so this is how when we are looking for the repetitive operations we normally use the loop mechanism now this is another sort of the loop another type of the loop which is called as a while loop so you can see in this loop that when n is equal to zero and the condition we can put the, so if suppose condition is not going to be met then it will go and it will print the dry off otherwise it will go in the same way and it will print whatever the conditions we are putting like suppose here we are mentioning that print the leather and print the reins so it will continue printing for this one until the condition met and then it will come out so this is how while we are having some sort of the approach where we require the iterations uh, where we call the repetition so we can use the loop concept and we have the different sort of the loops in Python and in the same way like in other programming languages as well. Now you can see here that this is not only for the iteration purpose but we can use it for multiple purposes as well. We can do the multiple uh, functions inside the loop. From this loop you can see that we are running the loop in iterations and also we are trying to means take the sum of all of the iterations. So from the 9 to 9, this is the first iteration. When it goes to the second iteration, which is the uh, 41, so this is the information and the array, which is 9, 41, 12, 3, 74, and 15. So what it is doing, it is actually adding, summing up the previous information into the new iteration. And finally, it is going to provide us the last sum up. So in this, you can see the last sum up value is 154. So it means that for each iteration, it is going to add the values and finally it reaches to the last information. So in the same way, we can apply the different sort of the functions as well. So for today, this is, we discuss about the loops, we discuss about the different functions, we discuss about the variables, we discuss that how and what about the syntax for the Python, how we can use it. So please go further for the reading related material at the times the tutorials are available and also read the further related material which is also available at the times and the detailed slide for these lectures are also available where you can find these all of the details and further in-depth details about the other functions as well and beside of that you can find the functional uh, fundamental programming for python which is means the video number two so you can see that how you can be learning the concepts that what we have discussed here so later on you can go for the hands-on practices for any programming tool it's very important that you need to apply the concepts at your own so go for the hands-on practices and explore more from the tutorials and reading materials and from the videos whatever they are suggested there and then you can go to the next or uh, you can be ready for the next level so i hope you enjoy it and continue with the same. So thank you very much and wish to see you in the next session. Bye for today. Thank you very much.